Welcome to Across the Aisle. My name is Gail Garbrandt and we're so very happy that you are with us today. Um, the show is on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. and again on Fridays at 4.30 p.m. But if that is not a convenient time for you, please don't worry because you can go on to WJERTV2.com and look for Across the Aisle under a community programming and you can watch the show there or you can Google it on YouTube, Across the Aisle, TV2, New Philadelphia, Ohio. Well, we are in the pre-primary segment of our show. The primary election is Tuesday, May the 2nd, 2017. All 81 precincts are open for the primary and there is a renewal of the county sales tax which is on the ballot in all 81 precincts. Besides that, we do have some candidate races and you can actually um, vote early beginning the 4th of April by going into the Tuscarawas County Courthouse into the Office of the Board of Elections and you can um, cast your ballot there. Uh, or you can wait till May 2nd on election day and go to your precinct and vote. But if you haven't changed your address and you've moved since the November 2016 election, or if you haven't registered to vote and you want to vote in this election, the last day to register to vote is April the 3rd. So today's guest is one of the candidates that's going to be on the ballot in the city of New Philadelphia. With us today is Dan Lanzer, and Dan, as I said, lives in New Philadelphia. He served on uh, New Philadelphia Council, and then he was off council, and he's decided that he wants to run, and he will be on the ballot in New Philly. So, Dan, thank you for coming to be on our show this afternoon, and I know how busy you are, and we appreciate you taking time to talk to our voters oh, today. Oh, I appreciate this time, Gail. Thanks for having me. Why don't we start out by talking a little bit about your background. Are you a Tuscarawas County native? I've pretty much been from New Philadelphia my entire life. I've, I've moved away a couple times for short periods of time, but I've pretty much lived here my whole life. Okay. And uh, I'm a kitchen manager over at uh, Dee's Restaurant in uh, New Philadelphia. So I work here and I live here too. Okay, great. And you're married? And yes. You're, and your wife, of course, lives in New Philly yes. and works in New Philly as well. Uh, yes. And uh, what's your favorite thing about living in Tuscarawas County? Oh, I, ju I just love the people here. I think I, I like the the blue collar attitude that the Tuscarawas County brings, you know, and I, that's pretty much it. I want to be a, a voice for the working people here in, in Tuscarawas County. Okay. And what else can you tell us about your background um, that makes you a good candidate to be on council in, in the city of New Philadelphia? Well, I've always had the kind of calling to serve. You know, I, I, I do, I put some time in over at the YMCA as a fitness instructor there. And I also, you know, I've been on council before and uh, I consider myself a, a pretty good diplomat. You know, I'm, I'm, I try to bring people together to, on, on issues so that we can get things accomplished and keep the city moving forward. So you're a bridge builder. I am. That's, that's really important, especially when you're involved in, in politics and representing a diverse constituency like right. within the, new, the city of New Philadelphia. Um, and did you go to school in Tuscarawas County? Uh, I, did, I did my elementary years, and then I lived in Virginia Beach for my high school years, and I, went, I graduated high school down in Virginia Beach. I bet that Beach. was tough, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but you're back here, and that's I'm back what's here, important. Yes, that's right. Okay. Well, um, so can you tell us today why you are running? for uh, New Philly City Council. I, I just want to keep, I, I have tremendous pride in the city and I, I just want to keep think, the city moving forward. Um, I, I think this is a great city, so I mean, there's not anything necessarily wrong with the city, but I just want, I, I, I want to keep it moving forward. Okay. And do you have, um, I know that you were on council before, and so um, who was mayor when you were on council before? Uh, I started with Mike Taylor and then we had Dave Johnson and then when I left, then Joel, that's when Joel Day came on. Okay. And so what kind of projects and issues were foremost in your mind? What were your favorite things you worked on during your past tenure on council? Well, I'll tell, tell you the truth. The legislation is there, you know, and the, the things that I, I've worked on a couple of different projects. I, you know, I, I uh, got advertising up at the airport to generate money for scholarships and for money for the airport. 
uh, by getting energy efficient windows. And if you drive by there, you'll see the advertising signs on the airport and stuff. That was, that was in, uh, I sponsored that, that legislation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm always, and I'm encouraged by our current mayor that, I'm, that they like to do a lot of uh, trails and the, the canoe thing. I think that's definitely important for the city for building and, and uh, bringing people to the city, I think that would not normally come. Sure, tourism is tourism, a great right. um, economic driver, that's right. so that's always good for everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're going to be back in just a few moments with more Across the Aisle with our special guest today, Dan Lonzer, who is a candidate for Ward 3, New Philadelphia City Council. For the best dining in Northeast Ohio, you need to go and check out John and Cindy Elsasser's Canal Tavern of Zor. Nestled just outside the historic town of Zor, Ohio, the Canal Tavern offers every patron an amazing dining experience including great food, superior customer service, and a comfortable, unique atmosphere. The Canal Tavern is located at 8806 Towpath Road in Bolivar, Ohio, and reservations can be made by calling 330-874-4444. The Canal Tavern of Zor, where history meets great food. Hi, I'm TV2 Sports Talk's Bill Morgan. Some people are outstanding at playing sports, and then there's me. While we at TV2 Sports Talk may have never been All-State on the field, we are Tuscarawas County's MVP when it comes to local television sports talk and play-by-play. -play. Catch TV2 Sports Talk Wednesday nights at 7 and Friday afternoons at 5 on DMG Channel 2. Myers & Miller Podiatry provides complete foot and ankle care to patients of all ages. The practice was established in 2000 by Dr. Adam Myers and has grown to include Dr. Andy Miller in 2007, Dr. Jason Bakich in 2010, and most recently Dr. Kristen Henry in 2015. Our core values of respect and honesty are the basis for how we manage our practice and we continue to grow by building relationships with our patients in order to better serve their needs. Myers & Miller Podiatry serves Tuscarawa and Holmes counties with offices in Dover, Sugar Creek, Newcomerstown, Millersburg, and our newest location in Eurexville. Let's get started with building our relationship. Welcome back to Across the Aisle. My name is Gail Garbrandt, and my special guest today is Mr. Dan Lonzer. Dan is running uh, for Ward 3 City Council in the city of New Philadelphia, and he will be on the ballot in all the New Philadelphia precincts on the May 2nd primary. So Dan, thanks and welcome back. Again, thank you for uh -huh. having me. Now, we were talking about kind of your background and your qualifications and, and uh, for running for council, and I wanted to um, talk to you a little bit more because when you were on council before, you were an at-large councilman. That's correct. And what you're doing now is running to represent a specific ward within the city, and that is Ward 3, where you live. So what is the difference in terms of service um, in being a at-large councilman and being a councilman who represents a specific ward within the city. Okay, uh, councilman at large <clears throat> means I represented the entire city, so you know I was open more broad uh, selection of the city. But now, running as a councilman ward three, I can kind of concentrate on the one ward and, and try to focus on that and try to better better my ward along with the whole city in general too. Um, that and you know that's. As walking around, going door to door, and, and talking to people, I'm realizing some things that, uh, with issues that I would like to solve, and uh, I think I can I can hone in on that, especially being just the one ward instead of the at large. Mm -hmm. Well, I really do think that um, one of the most important parts of running for office 
is actually going out and oh, talking absolutely. to people. So going door to door, it's a lot of work. Um, most people who run for office kind of dread it because it seems to go on and on. I've done that knock and drop myself a few times. Yeah. Uh, and so what are you hearing from people in New Philadelphia? What are their concerns? Um, I mean, it's, you know, the typical uh, things, potholes, street lights out and stuff. And, you know, at, and when I was on council, that's the kind of phone calls I enjoyed. I love, I love helping people. So that's kind of what drives me to run for council, you know, is, is uh, the helping, helping everybody in the city. So, so um, be, being a, um, uh, uh, an at-large councilman as you were before and now running for a specific ward, how do you think that's going to uh, affect your allocation of time? Um, obviously, you're not going to have to travel across the entire city, not that we live in New York, um, but still, the city of New Philadelphia right. is very large. And for those of you who have not uh, ever walked or driven through the whole city, it is a pretty big city uh, when you have to take it uh, ward by ward. It, it is a pretty big city. It is, absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I, like, I think because I'll be getting the uh, emails and phone calls kind of pretty much centered from my ward. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and, it, and it has a special spot in my heart. This is my childhood neighborhood that I grew up in. So, oh, well, that's nice. so it even gives me that much more that I, you know, uh, focus on Ward 3. Are there any projects um, from when you were on council before, and I know that we have a different mayor now, we have um, Mayor Joel Day in New Philadelphia, and are there any projects that you were unable to finish last time you were on council that you'd like to get back into? Um, I, I was working on, uh, working on council procedure, uh, working on changing, making rules and making them a little bit more simplified, you know, because our, our ordinances haven't been changed in years mm -hmm. when it comes to that. So just, you know, piece by piece, we. We weren't trying to rewrite the whole book in one one session, but right. I mean, a little bit. I could work a little bit more on that. I think so. And, uh, then, I mean, in terms of, in terms of transparency, of course, right. any resident is welcome to attend council. Absolutely. And council meets. Uh, they actually meet this this evening. Uh, uh, they meet every second and fourth Monday at seven thirty, and then usually uh, before that, they'll have committee meetings on the same evenings and stuff. Okay, and so as a, as a councilman, typically, how many committees do you sit on? You'll chair one committee, and then you'll sit on two others, and then you'll be an alternate on another one. So you're going to be on four committees total. Plus then, uh, like my last time out, I was on the airport commission. So I was uh, uh, sitting with, you know, we had a county commissioner at the time, it was Belle Everett. Uh, she was on the commission, and there was a couple pilots and, and a couple appointed seats and stuff, and uh, it, was, it was rewarding. Okay, great. Um, so who makes those committee assignments? Does the mayor um, assign them or do you get to choose? Actually, the council, well, the council president assigns the committee in, in, uh, with, with council's approval. And is that done on a partisan basis or is council nonpartisan? Um, we try to be nonpartisan. I mean, once you're elected, you're on the same team, you know, that's, and that goes back to the whole diplomatic part of, you know, you got to kind of set party aside and do what's best for the city, I think, mm -hmm. when it comes to being on the council. Do you see, foresee, and I know you talked about working on rules and procedures, um, do you foresee any major changes coming, um, or do you think it's just going to be a continuation of trying to make things a little more seamless and a little less paper heavy? Right, yeah, more to where, you know, because uh, some years ago we changed, uh, we changed all administration, you know, mayor, uh, mayor law director, count, uh, council clerk, everything changed. So there's a lot of questions in the air, which, you know, everybody was new. So I just think working on the, the procedures and, and, and the rules is, is a way to everybody to be on the same page and make it more simplified and modern. Mm -hmm. so. All right, well, that sounds great. Well, it sounds like you have some work cut out for you yeah. and some great projects. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue our conversation when we come back uh, with more Across the Aisle in just a few moments. So please stay tuned. Hi, I'm Elaine Miller with Naturally Green Cleaning Service. My company serves both commercial and residential clients. We do general cleaning, spring and fall, empty homes to get them move-in ready, and final cleans for new construction. We use eco-friendly cleaning products that leave your home or office fresh, clean, and safe for you, your family, pets, or coworkers. Our focus at Naturally Green is to provide excellent customer service paired with outstanding work to build a relationship of trust with you, our clients. Having served the area four plus years, we have had many referrals and testimonials that you can access on our website at www.naturallygreencs.com. 
www.ghostbusinesscoaching.com. Our work sells itself, therefore we have never had any contracts even with our largest commercial accounts. Call us today for your free quote and see what makes our company stand out. Omni Orthopedics comprehensive programs provide early diagnosis and successful treatment for every musculoskeletal problem. With more than 30 years of orthopedic experience, their physicians offer patient-centered treatment for all ages. From evaluation to rehabilitation, your treatment plan is designed around your needs. Omni Orthopedics specializes in sports medicine, the spine, physical medicine and rehabilitation, foot and ankle, and hand surgery. If pain makes activities like climbing stairs, standing or walking a challenge, turn to the home team at Omni Orthopedics. Their mission is to provide you with the highest quality and most advanced orthopedic services so you can get back in the game. Located in the Oxford Medical Arts Building, Omni offers a full service facility including digital x-ray and physical therapy. So there's no need to travel when quality care is so close to home. Omni Orthopedics, setting the standard in orthopedic care. For the best dining in Northeast Ohio, you need to go and check out John and Cindy Elsasser's Canal Tavern of Zor. Nestled just outside the historic town of Zor, Ohio, the Canal Tavern offers every patron an amazing dining experience including great food, superior customer service, and a comfortable, unique atmosphere. The Canal Tavern is located at 8806 Towpath Road in Bolivar, Ohio, and reservations can be made by calling 330-874-4444. The Canal Tavern of Zor, where history meets great food. Welcome back to Across the Aisle. My name is Gail Garbrandt, and with me today is my special guest, Dan Lonzer. Dan is a resident of New Philadelphia. He is one of the candidates on the ballot for the May 2nd, 2017 primary, and he'll be on the ballot in the city of New Philadelphia. He is running for Ward 3 Council uh, in the city of New Philadelphia. So Dan, welcome back. Thanks. And thanks, thanks, again. thanks again for coming on the show. Oh, I appreciate you having me. You're welcome. Um, we were talking about, you know, the difference between running at large and running in a specific ward. And um, just for the sake of our voters, how many people sit on council? Okay, there's uh, seven members, seven council members, and uh, four of them are council ward. So there's one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, three councilmen at large. And so there's a little bit of an overlap with those at-large council people. Right, right. Okay. Well, you decided that you wanted to run for council then, and this time you're running against an incumbent. And um, so that kind of puts a different, a little bit of difference in terms of your campaign. So um, what did you want to tell our voters today about why they should vote for you for Ward 3 Council? Um, just, just the fact that mm -hmm. I... Again, that I love this city and I, I feel an urge to serve, and uh, that's what my calling is to, to run again. And you know, I, I'd rather not run against an incumbent, uh, you know. But uh, we live in the same ward, so that's just the way things worked out. Uh, and uh, I appreciate. Uh, I've been a long time uh, Democrat and uh, uh, long time, uh, basically, lover of New Philadelphia, and I would appreciate your support. Okay, great. Well, I know that campaigns can often be chaotic and stressful and unpredictable. And I know you said that you really like going out and talking with people. Um, is there a part of running or campaigning that um, that isn't so much fun? Um, actually, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm one of the ones that I, I enjoy that because when you're campaigning is the one time where you actually, you know, get out and talk door to door with people. And, and they, they'll talk to you, you know, I mean, I could, I get carried away sometimes. I tell myself, well, you know, I'm only going to go out a couple of hours every evening, but there I am four hours later because I've had a half hour conversation with one of our residents, you know, and I, I learned so much about people and, and this is a great city and a uh, very uh, blue collar, hardworking city. Okay, so. great. And did you have any um, specific projects that you wanted to really work on um, should the voters elect you um, that possibly moved you to run this time? Uh, well, just, just from going in, in my neighborhood alone, and that, and that kind of inspired me to run for Ward 3 is, you know, the uh, working on, on some of the dilapidated buildings and, and some of the, you know, the, the sidewalks and, and the infrastructure around New Philadelphia, you know, and, it, and I've got to see, you know, that we can work on, there's some areas that need worked on, I think. 
So just for um, the purpose of orientation for, mm -hmm. for our viewers, can you give us the, the geographic coordinates of Ward, Ward 3? Um, I'm pretty much from uh, East High on uh, the Shellmar side of, the, of East High, uh, all the way up, pretty much all downtown, and then um, uh, the west side all the way till 7th Street from, from the east, or from the south side, basically, of, uh, of, of Ray Avenue and up, up, you know, for that section of town, but. That's a lot of area to it cover. Is, it is, a, it's a, it, it sprawls <laughs> out pretty good. It's, it's more than you would think for one ward out of four. Well, you know, one thing that's good about that is though that the houses are pretty close together and, yeah. and it's not like um, actually campaigning in a township no, right. where you're having to go. Half mile. Um, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're having, you have so much distance between houses and then you have to find a way to communicate to that broadly dispersed population, at least when you run within the city, right. um, you've got that concentration of people, and it's just um, you know walk, as like you said, walking and going door yeah, to door. It's good exercise too. So. Any <laughs> final words for our voters today? I would just uh, appreciate your consideration and your support on May second. Thank you. Well, again, we want to thank everyone for tuning in this afternoon. If it's not convenient for you to watch us, we are on TV2, Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. and again, Fridays at 4.30 p.m. If you're working or if you're busy, and we know how busy people can be, especially councilmen going to all those committee <laughs> meetings, uh, you can actually go on to uh, this website, wjertv2.com, and look under Community Program for Across the Aisle, and you'll find our show. Uh, you can also Google us uh, and, or look for us on YouTube uh, for Across the Aisle TV2, New Philadelphia, Ohio. Not only will you find the segments for this pre-primary section of our 2017 show, but all of the past shows from last year and the year before are there for everyone to watch and um, uh, there's some, some kind of fun, fun things that we've done. So um, we really want to thank you all for tuning in. Um, it is our objective to uh, inform voters of issues on the ballot and candidates um, and procedures for the election. So again, we urge you all to get out and vote on May the 2nd, whether you vote early starting April the 4th or if you wait till election day to go to your precinct, um, it's really important for you to have your voice heard. So Dan, thank you so much again for thank taking time to visit with us and talk about your plans for New Philly should the voters elect you. Best of luck to you. And for all of us here at TV2, thank you and have a pleasant evening.